Hello everyone to the second session's Minecraft intro for this year's Minecraft Club. So first session we mostly concentrated on the adventure world and then we went into the creative world for the last two work weeks to work on some ship designs that I had a lot of fun with. And this session we're going to be concentrating on both the adventure world stuff and on the arena world where we get to build our own mini game arenas. So the arena mod I'm using is really cool because it has lots of different PvP goals and you can mix and match them together to make a really unique arena. Everything isn't just one game mode, you can mix and match, you know, capture the flag with domination, with team, you know, points and a time limit, all these kinds of things you can kind of customize and mix and match together. Uh, some of it I'll have to help you with, so some of it is not doable directly in the game, I have to go in and edit a config file uh, to get things set up exactly how I want them to be. But for the most part, you guys can design it, build it, you know, tell me what you want, if there's anything you can't do on your own, and make a game that we all can play. So the first thing I want to talk about is design. So I think right here we have a very classic design. It's two teams. There's a middle part with a bunch of loot to gather. And the bases are, you know, very easily color coded. And we have set up uh, at each base. There's a little boost to give somebody uh, that when they get into the middle, it wears out and you know, kind of falls apart. But if people start trying to attack another person's base, the people that will respawn will be stronger and able, better able to defend their area. So I thought that was really cool. I also like that we get a little bit of a vertical, uh, a vertical slice. So we see we have two uh, levels to fight on. We have the little archers area and we have the main area uh, so that could be expanded you can make bridges you can make another central archer area you know there's lots of stuff you can do um, to make this a more not flat uh, arena so that's really cool um, also the important thing here also is that the spawn points are you know pretty obvious because uh, that's important you want your spawn points to be protected so if you spawn somebody right here obviously nobody's going to be able to easily shoot an arrow in from the other side of the map and kill them before they have a chance. Um, you know, and it's not a dangerous area where, oh, I put my spawn point right above, you know, a, a floor of lava and they, they, if they're not paying attention, they walk forward and just die instantly. Uh, so those are things that, you know, pay attention to when designing where your characters, where the players are going to start, you know, what, what are you going to give them? Um, the one thing these arenas don't have right now is um, the lobby. So every arena will have a lobby area. And in the lobby area is after you click the join the arena um, sign, it'll teleport you there before the next game starts. And in the lobby, you can choose different classes and different um, you know, equipment and stuff and kind of customize yourself. Now, as a designer, you get to choose what those are. You can have just one class, everybody's the same and put all the weapons and everything out on the field as they run around and collect, or you can make lots of very customized characters and you don't put any equipment out and it's just, you know, wherever they chose, that's who they are. So, you know, they take the archer, they get the bow and arrow, but nobody else does. Um, and so you can kind of customize your arena like that. Do you want people running around to get items? Do you want people to start with the items? Um, that's all one of the options, but uh, to do that, you'll have to build a lobby area. Um, for a lot of people, I think you'll just build up and build a little uh, square area above the arena um, and put the signs there. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, but you do get the ability to customize uh, those characters and those classes and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool. Um, the second part is I like that both of these arenas um, are using some different uh, terrain. You know, so we got lava and the um, kind of the fire bricks right there and that they've got water right here so if you fall into the lava it's not going to immediately kill you you can have a little bit of a chance to get into the water and cool off and they use it to protect the central area from all the loot you know just to make it a little bit harder for people to get in and out um, so i like that i also like the design over here make it more floral make it water you see they have a little hidden chest right there and you know when you're fighting and you're battling each other you know this actually provides a little bit of cover. People can't see you very well. You know, you can kind of peek up just over the hedge, see where people are, and then pop out and surprise them. Um, obviously, they need to put some stairs in because you can't get out without flying. Uh, but using plants and using other stuff, you can see, makes the world not feel so flat. Even though this is a fairly flat arena, you know, you, you're blocking vision. You're keeping 
information away from the enemy by hiding around, sneaking around stuff. So it's a cool idea. Uh, really like it. Can't wait to see this get expanded on. Um, and then over here we have, uh, this is probably some people just playing around, destroying stuff. But I wanted to mention this uh, arena, which looks to be a non-straight arena. So you think about it as, you know, you have two areas and you're fighting around a corner. You can make different paths. You can make this corner really dangerous. You know, it's the short path, you know, but it's also the dangerous path. And you have a long path around to an objective. You know, maybe you're playing a destroy a block game mode and they have to get to the back of the base and destroy the emerald uh, block. You make that a little bit safer, more cover, but obviously it's going to take longer to get around there. So you can give the players options, uh, you know, use the terrain differently, you know, use the shape of the arena differently. Um, you know, one part could be going up into the sky, one part's down below. All that kind of stuff is things to think about when you're designing your arena and what you want it to be like, you know, what do you enjoy? So that's pretty much what I've seen so far. I'm interested to see what we kind of get through the first two weeks or so and see what people are building. Um, if you're new to Minecraft, I'll be working with you. I've got a few videos up from the last session that kind of explain how do we capture uh, or make an arena area for yourself. Um, because you can't just walk in and start building. Uh, this area is protected to prevent people from, you know, blowing up other people's arenas. So, um, yeah. Uh, for the game modes, um, what they're called are they're called goals. And here is a list of the various goals we have, so you can start thinking about what do you kind of want to, you know, incorporate into your arena. Uh, we have beacons, so that means it's a central point or points that when you just stand next to them your team starts getting points. And so you can be make a game uh, arena where you say, okay, first to a thousand points wins the game. And, you know, as long as people are standing next to the, you know, designated beacons, their team is accruing points. And so it becomes kind of a capture the, or a king of the hill style. You know, this is the important place to be, keep everybody else off of it. Uh, so that's beacons. You have block destroy, which is one of the ones I built last year. And it was really fun. The idea is that you build up your base and you choose a sp very specific type of block that you don't use anywhere else. So let's say it's this guy. And you'll say, okay, these are the important blocks. Whichever team loses all of their important blocks first loses the game. And so the teams are rushing past each other's bases, trying to get you know to wherever the, the special blocks are and blow those up to win. And that can create some really interesting um, dynamics of team. You know, Who's going to stay on the fence? Who's going to go and attack? Uh, how do you work together? All that kind of information uh, is really, really uh, fun to see and watch the kids kind of communicate back and forth on. Uh, checkpoints. So if you want to build a, an arena that has no fighting, you can actually build a racing uh, arena. So I did one uh, about two years ago that was all about the Elytra. And so it was a huge arena. Um, you'll need my help to make it if you want it uh, to be big enough to really take advantage of the elytra flying area but it was really fun we had checkpoints we had um so you had to go and touch each checkpoint in order before you could get to the end and you know win the race and you know there's obstacles in the way and you had to make your jumps just right and you had things bumping you up into the air high uh it's just really really fun um and so if you don't want to do a fighting arena then totally make a race you know do some parkour whatever you want to do it's really cool uh then we have standard domination which is just means um Go and find a flag object and just you know keep it the longest so you can run around with it. Uh, you, know, you pick it up and you run around and as long as you're holding it, you're getting points for your team. Uh, there's capture the flag. You know go run over to their base, get the flag and bring it back. Uh, there's infect, which is a zombie style game where one person starts out infected, everybody else uh, just has to try and survive. But whenever the infected person you know, destroy somebody, they become infected too. And so slowly, slowly, you know, more and more infected are there and fewer and fewer survivors are there. Uh, so that's a fun arena to build because you have to build an arena that's not really team-based, but just an interesting one to move around and hide and, you know, be able to escape the infected uh, some way. So it's, it takes a lot of skill to build, but it's really fun gameplay. Uh, liberation. Uh, this one is where whenever you destroy a player, they get put into a jail. And somebody on the other team has to go and um, basically break a block or hit something, hit a switch, to cause a jail break where everybody that was captured is released and you know the fighting begins again. Uh, that can be a pretty fun one, but you need a lot of players. You need about six or so per side uh, to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, it's usually just like 
you know, one person gets captured, the other person gets uh, destroyed, game over. Uh, so yeah, if you build a big enough arena for that one, that one's pretty fun. Uh, pillars, uh, you can capture or destroy pillars by clicking on them. Um, it's similar to block destroy, but it has the option instead of destroying the blocks completely, you can instead capture the pillar and every pillar you have captured gives you points. So you can have them scattered out throughout the level and it's just kind of like moving around, capturing a place and then moving to the next one, capturing it and you know trying to stop the enemy from going and capturing the ones you just captured. Um, so that one's pretty interesting. It takes a, a bit of work to get it working. Um, let's see here. We have player lives or team lives. So you can say, you know, does the game end when somebody, when the, when a person has lost three lives or does it end when a, the whole team has lost 10 lives? Uh, you have the options there to kind of separate, you know, do you want to do it more like everybody gets one life only or everybody can respawn a few times or the team just has a certain pool uh, everybody can pull from. Uh, I generally say go with the team lives. It's more fun. People don't feel like they get left out if they just die early by accident, you know, falling into lava. Um, tank is another game mode where it's an all versus one. So one character, the tank, is, you know, lots of buffs, lots of good equipment. And everybody else is just regular, no buffs, you know, simple equipment. And it's an all verse one. So the tank is very, very powerful, but you know, if everybody else works together, they might be able to take down the tank. So that's a that's a fun, uh, fun one too. And that's pretty much the the main goals. There's some other uh, ways of handling things like sudden death and um, different arena stats and stuff, but we won't really worry about those. Just think about those goals. Think about maybe a few you want to implement. Um, you know, I, there's also a time limit you can set. I would suggest most of you set a time limit for about 10 minutes at most. Um, sometimes you may even just five minutes. And that way people can join and start your arena more, uh, more often. And people aren't like, oh, I want to play your arena, but you know, the game goes on too long and I don't want to wait that long. I'm going to join somebody else's arena. So plan to try and make your game, you know, playable within about 10 minutes. That's a pretty good, uh, standard to me. All right, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all you guys uh, again. I know it's going to be a little bit smaller this time just because of the play, which sounds really cool. And that will be OK, because we're going to be spending a lot of time really digging into this arena mod. It takes a lot of work to get things working, but when it does, it's super awesome. So I will see you guys on Wednesday and have a good week. Bye.